Hi everybody, welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be unboxing a Havy 4.3 inch IPS coin microscope. Got it from Amazon for about 36 bucks. So this is what the box looks like. Here's on the side of the box. So you got your photo resolution, video resolution, magnification, and looks like it works with Windows. So we're going to test it on Mac as well. So on this side of the box, looks like it has a three-step process on how to assemble the microscope. Nothing on the bottom of the box. So here we have the manual and the model number. I'm going to have to read that one off camera. And then here, let's bring everything out. Uh, it's probably easier if we have everything organized out of the box so we can go over it. There, there are quite a few things here. So let's go over it. So that's a piece of cardboard. We don't need that. Here we have the manual and the micro SD card. Looks like it's a generic 32 gigs. A calibration slide, USB-C charging cable, a bracket, the microscope with a screen attached to it, a rod, and looks like there's a base here. So after reading the instructions, it seems pretty simple. So we have our rod, put it into the bracket. There are these two knobs on the back and on the left that you tighten up to hold the rod in place. Now we can grab the base. There's a screw on the base as well that we can um, loosen and tighten up to hold the rod in place. Go, let's tighten it up here. All right, and then I guess we can grab our microscope. We just have to put it into this ring here and tighten it up. Wait, okay, just a heads up, I'm not a micro microscope expert or anything. So when we do the testing, I'm just kind of going off the manual. Okay, so it looks like we can adjust the height here on the rod. So you can also move the microscope up and down the bracket here using this knob. And according to the manual, just a heads up, looks like this does not work with a cell phone. And you cannot see plant cells with this microscope. So let's remove the screen protector here. And here's the micro SD card that was included. So from what I read, looks like this is where the photos and video will be stored if, um, if you're not hooked up to a computer. So now let's charge it up. So it came with this USB-C charging cable. So when it's charging, on the lower right corner of the screen, you can see that there's a red LED light. When it's fully charged, it turns green. Very simple, standard stuff. So let's boot it up, give it a startup screen so I can see it. Pretty quick, boots up pretty quick. So I put a uh, ketchup packet underneath. So there's a wheel here on the right side and there's a focus wheel as well. So let me give you a side view so you can see it better. So here on the side, on the side here, there's something that says LED and this is to control the brightness of the light. And the focus wheel is right here. So as you can see the ketchup packet unfocused, focused. So let's take a look at the menu settings here. So I have it on the side because I could not find a screen brightness control. So here's the resolution. There's language settings. There are time and date settings that you can change. And this is the screensaver timer settings. You got frequency, so I did set it to 60 hertz. It was set to 50 hertz for some reason, so I set it to 60. Uh, here we have the, if you want to format the SD card, which we don't because I already did format it before. Uh, let's see what else we have here. We have the firmware version uh, mod model. The firmware version, that's what we have there, firmware version. All right, so let's test a Pokemon Blue game. So I just opened it up because this is the main purpose I bought the microscope for. Later, we're going to try it on the computer and everything. So, again, screw it. I opened up this Pokemon game here. 
So basically what I need this is to help me see things better, especially for like small electronics. And don't forget to remove the cover. It makes a big difference. So here we have one of the chips for the Pokemon game. So makes it much easier to see. No need for eye strain. So now if we press this camera button, you can switch mode. So there's photo mode, video mode, and uh, playback mode. Just three settings. So if you want to record a photo, let's test it out. I have a penny here, so I'm going to adjust the brightness as you can see here. As you can see on the upper left corner of the screen, there's a camera. All you have to do is be in camera mode and then press the OK button. So let's focus it up real quick first. Let's focus it up. So here, you see we have a camera right there. And then I just tap OK and boom, it takes a photo. Let's do another one. Perfect. Pretty simple stuff. If you want to change mode, so as you can see, I press the camera button because it has a camera icon on the left and then you just press OK to record. So you can tell that it's in camera mode because on the upper left corner there's like a video camera image. And so it's recording now and then if you want to stop you just have to press OK again. Very simple stuff. Now if you want to go into playback mode just press the camera button again and then just press OK. So we are doing playback on the video that we recorded. This is the video that we did earlier. So far so good. Okay, now let's, so that's one of the images and then you can use the left or right arrow buttons to kind of scroll through the playback. So we took two photos and then if you want to go back to photo mode right there, just tap the camera button again and you're good. Yep. Okay, so in the manual, we have a link to the software if you're planning to use it with a PC or Mac. Um, so I went to their website and downloaded the software. And after we installed it, we're going to plug in our microscope to the computer. And then it's going to give us a screen here. So memory, PC camera. So we just have to go to PC camera, tap OK. And then so I did a screen recording to make it easier to see. Because I was tracking it with my phone, it was really hard. Um, it wasn't very good, it was hard to see stuff. So I'm doing a screen recording from my laptop. This is a Windows PC. There's a resolution, you got format, there's only one option. Photo, video, but let's try something. So we have to calibrate it first. So I click calibrate, I tap help. As you can see here, there's some basic instructions on how to calibrate. So I'm not an expert, like I said, I'm open to suggestion. But it seems pretty straightforward to me. So I tap the calibration button. And then all we have to do is put in the calibration slide in the microscope. So right now we have the calibration slide and there's these lines here that you can adjust. So I'm moving the slide a little bit. And in the green line you can change from the computer. So if it's hard to see too, there are these check boxes under the preview on the left. So you can flip it around, flip vertically. You can do gray, binary, emboss, or invert. So I'm just going to leave it at invert just as a test. So as you can see here, so that's about 5 millimeters, halfway to the 10. So I'm just basing it off the calibration slide they gave me. And I'm just going to name it ruler shaped because that's what it said on the calibration slide. Apply. And then the cross line appears right here. So you can, if you want it to disappear, you can just press that again. And then there's a line here. So if you want to measure things by a line, so let's see if it's going to be accurate. It's around 5 millimeters, which is based on my calibration. So that works. So I guess we can measure parallel as well. So we can draw one line and then a second line, and it's going to give us a distance. So this should be about 5 as well. So it looks like it works. Let's do rectangle. Yep, around the 5, you know. So circle two, so I'm just going to randomly th draw a circle here and it gives you a measurement. Cocentric, so this is going to be two circles. There you go. You can do angles as well. Yep, so it does work. Pencil, so you can draw around here. Let's try text. 
I'm curious if I can dra drag in, uh, drag the text around. So I'm just going to type hello. Okay. So it looks like you can just drag the text around. And then if you want to delete the last, and you can delete all of the measurements that you did. Now let's let's do a photo test real quick. So if you if you do photo, it takes a screenshot and the file is right there on the lower left corner. Pretty simple. Let's do video. So one thing I noticed when doing video, you can't draw or like measure things while you're doing a video. Most of the movement and action is going to be on the microscope. So I'm trying to click right now. I can't click anything else like the measuring tools or anything like that. So I wanted to give everybody a heads up. If you decide to use this with a computer and you're recording a video, you can't like draw measurements at the same time. And the recording is mostly on the what happens at the microscope area. So again, in terms of the file saves, it's going to end up on the lower left corner under files. So we did a first recording. I'm doing a second one, just another test. I'm going to put some action on the microscope. I'm going to throw in a ketchup packet, which is pretty random, but just to show some movement. And then we're going to review the video footage. So I am still in invert mode. That's why it looks weird. So there it is. I stopped the recording and here's the video file. Right here. So as you can see, I kind of skip forward a little bit. So it definitely works, but I just wanted to give everybody a heads up. And like I said, this is a Windows 11 PC, and you can go into settings too, and it looks like for measurements, you can change the color of the measurements, like the text color and the ruler color as well. And you can uh, save the image as a JPEG or PNG. And then let's do a Mac test. So now I'm in the website again. We're going to download the Mac software. But I personally do not recommend using this on Mac. So I have a USB-A to USB-C adapter since my Mac doesn't have any USB-A ports. It's a budget Mac. So we're going to plug in a microscope here. So we have the light indicator. And then we go to PC camera again. Uh, one reason why I don't recommend it on the Mac is that you'll see there's some problems with the measurement software. And there's a lot of permissions that it asks for. So I'm going to do remind me later. That's why I don't recommend it for the Mac. Also, there's like, I don't know, it's buggy. It doesn't work very well on Mac. And then, so first let's calibrate it, right? It's not calibrated. You definitely want to make sure we calibrate it. So now we can see what's going on in the microscope. So I'm screen recording on my Mac using QuickTime, just a heads up, so that you can see things better. So here is the calibration slide. So I put it in. So here it's uh, 0 to 10 millimeter. You can see that. So you can adjust the line, same as the PC. You can adjust these line to kind of set the scale is basically what it is. Okay, so we're going to put 10 millimeter. So after we're calibrated, there's these different resolutions here. There's the photo and video mode. So I just clicked it, so it should have taken a photo. We'll take a look at that later. There are a bunch of other modes here. So let me show you where the photo is saved. So here, there's a second window. You can do save file. It's called save files. And then I double click. But see, look, this is weird. The, fo the photo itself is inverted. That's why it's hard for me to recommend the software. It's really buggy. There's a bunch of stuff like some misspellings and stuff like that too. So now we're doing a video recording. And I'm just moving a ketchup packet underneath the microscope lens. And then let's stop it. So it's going to end up here in the second window that has saved files as well. So video seems to be okay. There's movement and stuff. I don't know. For some reason, I had a hard time using the uh, Mac here. So as you can see here, the video recording does work. But then let me show you the measuring tools. So there's a lot of issues here. I tried it a bunch of times and it just, I can't get it to work. So when you're measuring, you see there's all these red squares and stuff. Let it go. There's a lot of stuff going on here. Let me undo. Stop measuring. Undo. But it's pretty much for all the tools. I'm getting all these red squares going all over. It's like haywire around here. So let me clear everything out. Let's try a different measuring tool. Something is definitely not right with the Mac software from what I can tell. So you get, let's try a parallel, the parallel measuring tool as well. 
So if I do like, let's say right here, let it go. See, it's going haywire. I'm trying to do another parallel line. Yeah, it's pretty much all the tools. I tried it, you know, I tried uninstalling, reinstalling it. No luck. So I highly recommend not using it for Mac. Also, there's a lot of like permission requests on the software for Mac. So I don't know. But yeah, overall, my personal plan is to use the microscope just to like look at electronics like a standalone. I don't really plan on using it for PC. Thank you for watching. Have a good one.